tell me, how did you get all this truth without God? Romans 118, you suppress the truth. Yeah. 18 through 20, you without excuse. Yeah. You know God exists, the God of the Bible, but you won't serve him, cause you your own idol. Oh. You wanna be God, listen. listen. In my worldview, both knowledge and certainty oh. are consistent. Uh -huh. Cause I know the only God who knows everything. And you living in confusion, cause you reject the king. Yeah. Presupposition or apologetics. Yes. See, it's foolishness to say you can know something without God. It is. Like it's foolishness to say you can't know anything. That's right. Because you can know that. But we know things by our own know. All right. First sacred cow. The sinner's prayer. How many of you, be honest, because I'm going to raise my hand too. How many of you prayed a prayer when you came to faith in Jesus Christ? Okay. Not all of you. Okay. All right. The fact that you prayed a prayer when you came to faith in Jesus Christ does not mean your salvation is invalid. Okay, let's get that out of the way because that's going to be some of the, um, as we're enjoying uh, cookies and, and chips and water, that's going to be one of the accusations I'm going to hear is you're saying that my salvation is invalid because I prayed a prayer. No, I'm not. I'm not at all. All right, hear me again. Not saying that if you prayed a prayer when you came to faith in Christ, that your salvation is invalid. What I am going to say is that you were not saved because you prayed a prayer. You were not saved because you prayed a prayer. The sinner's prayer is a prayer most often used at the end of a church service by a pastor or an evangelist when the officiant of the service makes an invitation for people to accept Jesus as their Savior. Problem number one, Jesus does not need anyone's acceptance. We need His. Jesus is not in yonder heaven shedding tears pouting, wondering when people are going to accept him because he's lonely. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is sovereign. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That means he owns you and me and every other human being. Amen. He owns us. Whether we are in rebellion or submission to his lordship, he owns us. He created us. There are no autonomous human beings. There are no independent human beings. There are no free-thinking human beings. Especially the unbeliever. They cannot do anything outside of their nature. And their nature is a sinful one. They can only free, think freely about their sin. And they drink iniquity like water. The word of God says. No. Jesus does not need our acceptance, we need his. Many Christians also use the sinner's prayer after sharing the gospel with an unsafe person, using it to encourage the unbeliever who seems willing to become a Christian to make a commitment to Jesus. And when the sinner's prayer is employed, unbelievers are asked to repeat a prayer written by someone else, such as a prayer that appears at the end of some poorly written gospel tracts. Or they are asked to repeat the sinner's prayer, which is ad-libbed by the person sharing the gospel with them. Having prayed a sinner's prayer, unbelievers are often assured, either by a pastor, an evangelist, a Christian witness, a, a, either a friend or a stranger, that they are now a Christian because they prayed the prayer. You can think of the most popular mega-evangelists who fill arenas with Tens of thousands of people, because they all do this. And now because we have jumbotrons in stadiums, it'll flash on the screen now. Welcome to the family of God. Those of you who have prayed a prayer and accepted Jesus. How unbiblical. How unloving. cause someone who may not be saved to believe that they are, and then to have them stand before their creator and say, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of lawlessness. My heart breaks for this group of people more than any other on the planet. People who have been duped by well-intended Christians or charlatans that they are saved when they're not and to then stand before Jesus Christ to find out that decades of quote-unquote Christian living led to their destruction. Because they never came to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. 
because someone told them they were saved because they prayed a prayer. Who's doing the work? Who's doing the work in that scenario? The person who prayed the, prayed the prayer, right? The sinner's prayer, which was first popularized in the 19th century by evangelists like D.L. Moody and others, and later made a staple part of American evangelicalism in the 20th century by evangelists like Billy Graham and organizations such as Campus Crusade for Christ. I'm not questioning the salvation of these men, and I'm not questioning the intentions of their heart either. I'm not. I, I do believe that there are people out there getting people to pray prayers, and they have ungodly, hateful intents, and that's to empty people of their wallets. And I believe that there are men that God uses uh, uh, whose crowns um, that they will lay at the master's feet will be will far outnumber my own, who have unintentionally led to the massive false conversion rate in the United States and in other parts of the world because of this tradition. A tradition that has no root whatsoever in Scripture. You will not find a single sinner's prayer in Scripture. You will find sinners praying in Scripture, but you will not find a quote-unquote sinner's prayer, in other words, someone leading someone else in a prayer, repeat after me, and then declaring them to be saved. You will not find that anywhere in the Word of God. But yet this this devastatingly dangerous tradition of men is held up as if it were scriptural. And in this instance and some others, American evangelicalism has never cut the umbilical cord from Rome. Because Rome believes tradition is higher than the Bible. And no matter how many pastor, how many times you might tell a pastor, the sinner's prayer isn't in the word of God, they will insist that it's biblical. They will insist that it's biblical. Maybe you've heard one like this. Jesus, I now realize I've sinned against you. Please forgive me of my sin. Please come to my life and change my heart. I want you to be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, can a person pray something like that when God saves them? Yeah. Absolutely. Crying out from the depths of their heart, Lord, save me. The, the tax collector who couldn't even lift his eyes? Lord, forgive me, a sinner. That is a sinner praying. It's not a sinner's prayer as it's practiced in American evangelicalism. It's a distinct difference. It wasn't an apostle standing next to the task collector saying, repeat after me. Don't lift your head. With all eyes bowed, everyone's <laughs> eyes closed. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. <laughs> Ray Comfort uses this one often. There's nothing new under the sun. I've never uttered an original word in my life. Everything I know, I've learned from someone else. So, Derek comes to me. Poor Derek. <laughs> Sits up in front, posts me, gets picked on. <laughs> Derek comes to me one night and says, this will never happen. This is the worst hypothetical situation in the world. <laughs> Derek comes to me one night and he says, Tony, I've committed adultery. Amber's kicked me out. <laughs> Pickle. <laughs> but I really, I really desperately want to say I'm sorry. I want my marriage to be restored to my beautiful bride. I need your help. How can I help? I don't know what to say. No problem. I'm your Cyrano. No problem. Let's go over to the house. We have to knock on the door because Amber's already changed the lock. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Derek. Derek knocks on the door. I'm standing off the side tactically like a deputy sheriff just in case something comes flying out of the door. <laughs> I let Derek stand in front of the door because, well, you're going to look So I'm standing over here. Amber opens the door. I'm just out of you. Derek, tell her you're sorry. 
ever? I'm sorry. But seriously, he, he listened to open air preaching for a few hours. At least four or five of those who were out there with us on the streets approached him and shared the gospel with him. I knew this because my job was to watch all of the sheep, to make sure no one got in trouble, make sure no one got arrested, make sure no one got punched, and make sure everybody got back on their planes and in one piece and things like that. And so I'm watching everything that's going around, uh, going on. That's my, that was my role as leader of the academy. So I saw, I, I, reckon, I saw him watching for hours. I saw different people go up and talk to him. The you know, he was, there wasn't any indication that there was any animosity or, or fighting. There was no finger pointing. No, get away from me. I've heard this a thousand times. People, I mean, the, he was engaging people in conversation. So I get everybody on the bus. And I'm walking back to my car, and I, and I walk past uh, this young man, and, and I noticed that he's reading one of Ray Comfort's, uh, I mean, the, the poor guy probably had about 50 tracks in his pocket, <laughs> you know, because there's, there's 60 people in this little area just dying to hand a track to someone, and so people were going home with tracks enough to wallpaper their bedrooms if they wanted to. <laughs> and, but he was reading one of Ray's booklets, Save Yourself Some Pain. A gospel presentation and and as I'm walking by he looks up at me and he says funny seeing you here right now that's what he said and I said uh, I said hey you've been out here all night you've heard the gospel all night long I gotta know what you're thinking you know, what's going on in your head turned out that the young man uh, was either a member or at least an attender at John MacArthur's church, or had been, had been for a number of years, um, realized that he wasn't truly a follower of Jesus Christ, and he, and he simply walked away. He walked away from the church, he walked away from Christ, he walked away from everything. And I said, well, man, I know you've heard the gospel at that church when you were there. You've heard the gospel repeatedly tonight. I know a bunch of my friends engaged you in conversation. What's going on? You believe this is true? Yeah. Then what's keeping you from turning from your sin and putting your trust in Christ? And here's the moment 
where I could have taken credit for everything. And it's when he looked up at me, eyes kind of glistening, and he says, I need your help. Man, that was a tailor-made sinner's prayer situation right there in front of me. When you seem genuine, you seem sincere, just repeat this after me and mean it. Mean it with your whole heart. You have to really, really, really mean it. As Ray Crawford would say. I could have done that. I could have led him in a prayer. That young man at that moment, no doubt, would have followed me in that prayer. No doubt in my mind. I could have gone to the academy the next morning and say, guess what happened? That young man was sitting there all night. I got him to pray the prayer. <laughs> He's in. <laughs> He's one of the family. But by God's grace, I did the right thing. All glory to him. He said, you do not need my help. You need Christ. <coughs> you need Christ. I don't know what to do. Call out to him. Repent and believe the gospel. And he put his face in his hands and he wept. And for the next 10 minutes, I heard the most beautiful prayer of repentance I had ever heard in my life. I never could have scripted something like that to have him follow. Never in a million years. I, I get chills. I have chills right now just thinking back to that moment as I believe I'm watching the Holy Spirit work in this young man's life for his own glory and that Jesus would love me enough to allow me to watch the Holy Spirit work in another human being's life. And I just sat back and oh, I didn't say a word. When he was done, I could have made another mistake. Brother, welcome to the family of God. Nowhere in the Word of God will you see that a man can give a man assurance of his faith in Jesus Christ. Nowhere in the Word of God will you ever find a verse that says a man can give a man his assurance of his faith in Jesus Christ. So I didn't welcome him to the family of God. I prayed for him. I put my hands on his shoulder. I pray, God, may what I just heard be from you. I pray that you will cause this young man to be born again, and he will bring forth fruit in keeping with repentance, and that you will use him for your glory. And then I encouraged him to get back to church, man. Get back to church. If you're, and I, and I never said you are a follower of Christ, but if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you'll begin to love the things that God loves. You'll begin to hate the things that God hates. You will love Him. You will love His Word. You will want to be other lovers of, around other people who love Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep praying for you. And I walked away believing that I saw the Holy Spirit work in that young man's life. But the worst possible thing I could do for him at that very tender moment was to give him an assurance that maybe Christ had not given him. Because he still could have been stillborn. That could have just been an emotional expression. Just pouring, it could have been nothing more than emotion. It could have been, it could have been a, a, uh, a worldly sorrow and not a true repentance. I, my hope, my belief is I was seeing true repentance, but I'm not God. I don't know. I don't know. So the worst thing I could do at that moment was give that young man some false assurance that he was saved. But what I could do was pray for him that God would in fact save him and that admonish him to bring forth fruit in keeping with repentance. And my hope is that I'll see him one day in heaven.
You don't believe in God, or the Bible. Huh. I don't believe you, don't you believe. like you wouldn't believe me if I say I don't believe that words are true. When I have to be speaking, so see the fact that you're breathing proves the fool says there is no God. Is yeah, that's absurd. Yeah. Much more than the claim to deny words.